What's up, everybody out there? How you doing? Thank you for clicking that thumbnail over here at Pepe La View. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you, new viewers, you returning viewers, and you subscribers. I appreciate each and every last one of you. Thank you for taking this journey with me. And speaking of taking this journey, why don't you new viewers and returning viewers go ahead on and hit that subscribe button. Everybody hit the like button as well as leave a comment. I appreciate it. We're talking about Whitney Houston. And I have been wanting to talk about Whitney Houston for a while, but as I said, I have to feel it. And today I think I am, well, rather this evening or late this evening, I should say. I guess, you know, uh, taking some time off, really truly trying to focus. And I just feel like just, being in my sweet spot, putting my behind where my heart desires to be. So I'm just letting it flow over here right now. And so where I am right now is that I just want to talk about Whitney Houston. Oh, gosh, let me just say this. I miss her, you guys. Uh, she's really, truly, solely missed. Um, I, when I see old footages of Whitney Houston and I see her singing. Isn't it, it's incredible how talented lady, talented, I mean, voice unlike any other and something that she's gifted with. And she starts off, you know, singing with her mother and singing in the church, you know, using her gift, let's just say, for God, right? In the uplifting of his kingdom. Goes into a profession where she should be embraced by everyone, right? You know, you're trying to market it in such a way that people love it and appreciate it. And it's not appreciated. You know, she sings like this. She sings like that. The music sound like this. The music sound like that. You know, so to look at Whitney Houston's career and based on the fact that we want to be appreciated, but we're not, it says a lot. It says so much. And as I said, I miss her, don't know her, never been to a Whitney Houston concert. But I remember, and as I said, you know, you guys out there, you know, who probably know her. Some of you guys who probably know her probably may even watch this video, you know, about her. But for me in 1985, in 1986, in 1987, in 1988, let me tell you what I was doing. I was listening to Whitney Houston. And I remember in my neighborhood, okay, I'm talking about memories. We used to have talent shows, but we wouldn't sing. We would lip sync, like literally, like that's what the kids in my particular area in the community did. Like we would go in and we'll go in the house and I, uh, 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 somebody have a broom playing like it's a, a guitar, right? Somebody else will be up front and they'll be lip singing to the song. Like, that's what we did, you know? And our parents out there just looking at us, laughing at us, like, really? Like, that's what the kids, some of the kids did when it came to music. Like, we would just sit out on in, 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 on the uh, stand, you know, in front of the yard, on the porch. And that's what we did, you know, back in the those days, among other things, you know, we did other kids stuff, but I'm relating it to music. That's what we did. You know? So I miss that. And it's about appreciating, I guess, today. 
you know, I was, I guess I was on my Betty Wright phase and I guess I'm still on it, that I'm feeling a different kind of inspiration. And as I said, and maybe I'm still, you know, some of that is trickling over to the Whitney Houston video, but she's appreciated. And as I was getting ready for this video, you know, logging in, putting everything up or whatever, you know, loading things up. I thought about the song, You Were Loved. I mean, it was just like then I was like, and I thought the song was You Are Loved. You know, I remember hearing it a little bit. I haven't heard it, the entire song. So I'm going to listen to the entire song uh, once I'm done with the video. But I come to find out the song is entitled You Were Loved. And some of the lyrics goes, we all want to make a place in this world. We all want our voices to be heard. Everyone wants a chance to be someone. We all have dreams we need to dream. Sweeter than any star you can reach. Because when you reach and find, you found someone. You hold this world's most priceless thing. The greatest gift this life can bring is when you look back and know you were loved. Hmm. And that's kind of like how I want to remember Whitney Houston. I want to remember Whitney Houston as you were loved or I loved your music. So to see how her career went, right? I don't know. I just happened to look at this picture. And Whitney Houston, <laughs> I don't know why, but in this picture, you can probably look like, okay, I'm sad. I'm tired. In this picture, you can kind of get like, yeah, right. Uh, you know, I get this feeling like, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm so over it. You know, I'm so done. I'm so through with it. Like, I, I don't care. You know, type of vibe, you know. Mm. So to see her career, how it went, as I said in one video, so she's embraced by, for whatever reason, allegedly, I guess I should say allegedly, uh, Clive starts her career off intentionally with embracing Black audiences, you know, with the single You Give Good Love. Like, we capture the black audience and then we go, you know, for the pop audience. So to know that she needed to be loved and appreciated by her people, just the fact that that's there. I think it's, it, it goes to show that you're taken for granted. It's kind of like, oh, we got you. So we don't have to please you, if you will. You're just going to be there. To think and about the, uh, I think it was the Soul Train Music Awards when she was booed. I remember that. I was watching it. Yeah. And it was kind of like, did they just boo Whitney Houston? I mean, you can be loved and hated at the same time. And you know what, though, what always dawned on me about this, and this is what I would just say, this is just me. I always wonder, was she booed? Not because she wasn't soulful. It wasn't that. It wasn't because of her music and how it sounded. I always wonder for me, I think they booed her because she was winning. You ever think about that? Have you ever thought about the fact that you're winning? Yeah, people talked about, you know, her not focusing on, you know, black radio stations, you know, things like that. And, you know, she wasn't, you know, at a certain point in her career, it was kind of like, let's go over here, let's go over here. What, but what artist doesn't do that? 
Now I'm gonna say this, you know, we we have to be mindful how we say in vogue around these parts. I'm just letting you know. But the same thing with me once I, you know, started really focusing on music and in vogue coming out, like and I, you know, followed their career. I got news for you. In vogue did the same thing. And what do you mean by that? Some of the places in vogue performed when they was performing born to sing. They weren't performing in those same places with the Funky Divas record. Mm, once they hit it, they hit it. <laughs> A lot of artists have done that. And then what ends up happening is they come back to, you know, the audience is in in, in the places that, you know, hey, you know, we, 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 we're here. You see what I'm saying? And I don't think that artists do that intentionally, I think that at this moment in time, it's they're made to look at their careers as if, you know, we, we, we really don't need them. The money is over here. Like, oh, we, we don't need to focus on that demographic, you know. We don't need to do that. You know, we, wanna, we want to make you appealing to everybody. And to think that the gift that God gave her, the ability to sing and to move people, period. Mm. It says a lot. It says a lot. But yeah, I think she was winning because I remember my grandmother said, if she wins another award, I'm going to throw this shoe at this at the TV television. She was going to throw the shit, I remember, because Whitney Houston was winning everything. Now, mind you, there were some people out there who's probably saying that, you know, she wasn't soulful enough. I've heard some people say, oh, well, I don't like 80s Whitney Houston, but I, Whitney Houston, but I like 90 Whitney Houston. Well, it is what it is. I just like Whitney Houston's catalog, period. I do. And when I look back, and I'm talking about now appreciating, he did appreciate it. We went down that road with that fiasco too, you know, with being Bobby Brown, you know, the reality show, the alleged, let's say, and I'm still saying it because I don't know, I wasn't there, the alleged drug use, you know, the alleged um whatever that was going on that caused her career to spiral out of control, right? So I came across this video with Whitney Houston. Well, after Whitney Houston had passed, I can't remember the year. And Sissy Houston was being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. And what I got out of that interview with uh, Sissy, and it's the uh, I saw it come down my news feed recently. That's what prompted even for me to talk about Whitney Houston now, is that, well, how would you feel about Whitney Houston if she, you know, was in a same sex relationship? Like, would you approve it? And she was like, no, I wouldn't approve it. And I guess people thought that Oprah was like shocked that her mother said she wouldn't approve it. And I guess, you know, Oprah's like, huh, you wouldn't, would, huh, what? You know, stuff like that. And Sissy, Sissy's like, no, I wouldn't. No, I don't like Bobby Brown. And what I gathered when I watched that interview, to me, what I came across, because when I thought of Sissy Houston, I thought Whitney's mother, always. You know, it wasn't that she was like in the shadow of Whitney. It's kind of like you would think somebody else when you saw, you know, let's just say Sheila, who is that? That's Sheila's mother. Do you see what I'm saying? It, it, it's just what it is. You know, who? That's David's mom, right? 
So that's Whitney's mother. That's all I ever thought about. And that I knew she was a singer and could sing. And I knew she had a career as a singer. I knew she was affiliated with, you know, the Aretha Franklin's and the Dion Warwick's and so on and so forth. Like, and Whitney came from good stock. And when I think about that interview with Sissy Houston and Oprah Winfrey, what I come away from with Sissy is that she came off to me as the person who, I'm going to tell you how I feel about it, but you're an adult and you can make your own decisions. But now I know how I feel about it and that's anything. I've, draw, I've drawn the line in the sand. I don't need it to come around me, whatever that is. I know how I feel about it. <laughs> So you can go do your thing if you want to. This is probably what it, you know, it sounds like to me, she'll give her advice about it. And then how, you can take it or leave it and she walks away in peace. <laughs> That's how Sissy Houston came off to me in that, <laughs> in that interview. You know, and to me, it's kind of like Sissy is, like any other parent and how any other parent would be. Baby, this is a hard lesson. Hard head makes a soft butt. You know, that's how <laughs> Sissy comes off, you know, and that I do have standards and these, this is how I want you to do, be this, that, and the other. But now if nobody in the room, it, to me, it looks like Sissy Houston comes off as the kind of person like, I don't care about any of y'all in this room as it relates to how my points of view or how I feel about anything. Like, I'm going to tell you how I feel and I'm going to keep moving. Like, the whole room. <laughs> it's like, I'm done. <laughs> All right. You know, it, it seems like she's a straight shooter. And, and it's to me, it sounds like she's the same way when it comes to other people. She was like, oh, okay, when I got it, I see how you feel. I, as a matter of fact, in the, what is it called, that movie? The Preacher's Wife. Like the Preacher's Wife, when Whitney is directing the choir and she's telling them how they want to sing. And then uh, Whitney tells Sissy, like, this is how we want to do it, this, that, and that. And Sissy's like, oh, okay, then. I mean, that's how you say it. I, it's like, I'm going to ask a question about how I'm going to say how I feel about it. And okay, that's how you feel. Oh, okay, when we're on the same page, then I, I, I got an understanding. Whether if I like it or not, I, I have an understanding and sound minded. <laughs> right? Hmm. Hmm. And then, you know, for Sissy to mention that about Robin, Robin Crawford, right? Isn't that her name? See, I, I, I have pause when, or I pause, I guess you could say, in situations when things like this come up. Let's say Robin. You know, people say for years it was speculated that the two of them were in a relationship. Even the movie and uh, the Bobby Brown movie even hinted that there was a possibility that he even thought that. Right. And then the two of them go at it and, and he kicks her out and say, no, you can't be around here anymore. So on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. However, that went down. It's just what it is. Here is. My take on the Whitney Houston situation with her relationship with Robin. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed how Robin handled it. And this is from a person on the outside looking in. Okay. My thing is, is this. For the two of you to have allegedly been in a relationship, 
of some sort of a intimate kind. You never spoke about it when you were together. You never spoke about it when you were apart, even, even when Whitney was having everything thrown at her. I can't remember it coming up in the tabloids that you said anything, anything about her at all. Like, I don't think you joined in, Robin, the list of people who just came at her for monetary gain, just to bring her down. Like, so then I have to stop and say, well, what is your motive now? See, I've always thought that as it relates to the Robin and Whitney Houston thing, if Robin was to speak about it, why couldn't it have been something like Whitney, I cared dearly for Whitney. Whitney was a wonderful, good friend. We had a great friendship, a great friendship. And that was that. Why? Because Whitney Houston is not here to talk about it, nor did she ever talk about it in public. And for you, and I haven't read the book, but I guess now it's coming out that you are saying that I guess the two of you possibly had a relationship together. Is that what the book is about? Don't let me, don't quote me on that because I don't know. But I think that's what uh, people are saying is that you are saying that Y'all were in a relationship together. In the quote here, and I'm sorry, I'm looking at something, so you'll have to apologize. That's why I just want to make sure. And it says here, the quote here says, I'm sorry, you guys. Our friendship was intimate on all levels. Robin Crawford on her love for Whitney Houston. Hmm. And so that's the reason why I lose respect. Because if she didn't talk about it then, why talk about it now? Like, what's the motive? Money? Fame? Saddening, isn't it? I'm not going to be long with this one at all, I don't think. But I think it's about appreciating, right? And let's just say Whitney Houston was. Then you have that group of people who would probably say, oh, well, she couldn't live truly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you, you have that group of people, the same people who would say something about, you know, Luther Vandross, right? You know... <sighs> Do you see what I'm saying? It's it's I think at this moment in time, what I am focusing on is the fact that I appreciate Whitney Houston. And what I appreciate most about her is her voice. The voice I'm pretty sure that moved people at church before she even became. Whitney Houston in 1985. You know what I'm saying? 
like people were already encountering Whitney Houston's vocal abilities in the gift. Hmm. Well, you know, over here we have those pauses. You know, we I stop talking. It's usually, like I said, there'll be a time where you guys can quickly type in. <laughs> Like, okay, let me squeeze in. He's talking, so let me squeeze. He just stop talking. Let me squeeze in while he gets his thoughts together again. Yeah. So, Whitney Houston, we appreciate you over here. And who knows, I'll probably do a part two. I just wanted to upload this one very quickly. Yeah, maybe I'll do a part two on this one. Well, as you know over here, we believe in putting you behind where your heart desires to be. And remember, whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always says to me, baby, I love you, but remember that God loves you best. And on that note, I'll see you next video. Until then, you all take care of yourselves.